Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, God has something to say to us today. And so this morning, we gather around the table of the Word and the Eucharist so that we could listen to God's Word to us. And so, to prepare ourselves to listen to God and to accept His Word and His Sacrament, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask Him for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, In times past your fathers down to Terah, father of Abraham and Nahor, dwelt beyond the river and served other gods. But I brought your father Abraham from the region beyond the river and led him through the entire land of Canaan. I made his descendants numerous and gave him Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I assigned the mountain region of Seir in which to settle, while Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron and smote Egypt with the prodigies which I wrought in her means. Afterward, I led you out of Egypt, and when you reached the sea, the Egyptians pursued your fathers to the Red Sea with chariots and horsemen. Because they cried out to the Lord, He put darkness between your people and the Egyptians, upon whom the sea, so that it engulfed them. After you witnessed what I did to Egypt and dwelt a long time in the desert, I brought you into the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I delivered them into your power. You took possession of their land, and I destroyed them, the two kings of the Amorites before you. Then Balak, son of Sippor, king of Moab, prepared to war against Israel. He summoned Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. On the contrary, he had to bless you, and I saved you from him. Once you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho, the men of Jericho fought against you, but I delivered them also into your power. And I sent the hornets ahead of you that drove them, the Amorites, Persicites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hebites, and Jebusites out of your way. It was not your sword or your bow. I gave you a land that you had not tilled and cities that you had not built to dwell in. You have eaten of vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Who led His people through the wilderness, for His mercy endures forever. Who smote great kings, for his mercy endures forever, and slew powerful kings, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever, and made their land a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. The heritage of Israel his servant, for his mercy endures forever, and freed us from our foes, for his mercy <coughs> endures forever. His mercy endures forever.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, a man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we encounter today a very interesting dialogue between the Pharisees and Jesus, together with his disciples. And they were talking, they were discussing about marriage and divorce. But today I will not dwell so much into the topic of marriage and divorce, but I would like to focus on how the dialogue came about, how the dialogue went through, we will see that the Pharisees has a question for Jesus, and that is, is divorce lawful? Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And Jesus said and replied through the Holy Scriptures. But we will see that the Pharisees tried to insist. They said, but Moses said, we have a law, we have a tradition. Moses said this, our law said this. But again, Jesus countered and said, But wait, he would say, What did God say? What does God have to say about divorce? For the Pharisees, they tried to listen to many people, those who have written the law for them, they listen to Moses, they listen to one another discussing about divorce, 
But Jesus always intercepted with this. What does God have to say? My dear brothers and sisters, I think in this type of discussion, we need to learn from Jesus. Yes, we may have listened to many people. We may have listened to many experts. We may have listened and read through the many sources that we have. But let us always also ask, what does God have to say? Yung pag-uusap ni Jesus at ng mga pariseyo, lagi ang sinasabi ng mga pariseyo, ano ba ang sabi ng batas? Ano ang sabi ni Moises? Ano ang sabi ng mga pariseyo at mga eksperto sa batas? Pero ang sinasabi ni Jesus palagi, ano ang sinasabi ng Diyos tungkol dito? This is an important part of our discussion every day. What does God have to say? Ano kaya ang sabi ng Diyos sa atin tungkol dito? That is why every morning when you come to Mass, and in our case today, when you watch or listen to this online broadcast of the Mass, it is as if telling God today, Lord, I will begin my day, I will go to work, I will listen to what my bosses will say, I will go to, to, to uh, my school, I will go to my online class, I will do all the things that I have to do today, but I will begin this day with Mass because I need to listen to what you have to say to me today. In our first reading from the book of Joshua, we see that Joshua reminded the people of Israel that their ancestors became successful in life because they listened to what God have to say to them. Their lives were instructed by God. Their lives were directed by God. Abraham, Joshua said, traveled to Canaan because he followed what God said to him. Isaac, Jacob, and Esau they were all settled in their proper places because they listened to what God had to say to them. Moses and Aaron were given the task to free the Israelites from Egypt and now the Israelites were entering the promised land. They were going to enjoy the benefits of the Holy Land because they listened and they followed to what God had to say to them. My dear brothers and sisters, today, after listening to many people, let us always be reminded by Jesus for the most important thing today. What does God have to say about this? Siguro po, marami sa atin ay may sakit ngayon, maaaring nasa ospital ka, o ikaw ay nasa tahanan at nagpapagaling. You have heard the many doctors what they have to say to you about your sickness. Do not forget, listen also, what does God have to say about your sickness? You may have lost your job. And the many people had told you something about losing your job, 
about finding a job. After listening to these many people, listen also, what does God have to say to you about losing your job? You may be a doctor or a medical worker, and you are very tired working in the hospitals nowadays because of the many cases of COVID-19. You may have listened about news, about someone dying, about someone having a severe disease. You have listened to many news and to many people. Do not forget that this morning, ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want to say to me about my work today? About the challenges and the very tiring service that I am doing today. What have you to say about this? You may have a family member, a friend, an acquaintance who have passed away recently. And you are filled with sadness you are filled with grief. You are filled with loneliness. Listen to God. Listen to what He has to say about death, about losing someone. That is why it is important for us to always have the Word of God with us, to have prayer always with us. Jesus reminds us today, God has something to say to you about sickness, about your work, about being tired, and even about dying. God has something to say to us. Let this celebration of the Mass be an important encounter and listen to what God has to tell us today. Amen. Husbands and wives share in God's creation of new life. Our intercessions today center around the needs of parents and especially of children nowadays. For every petition, let us say, Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. That the Church may effectively teach its members the true dignity of marriage and help couples to stay together in their sacred calling. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill our, our homes, homes with, with your love, love, O Lord. That government leaders and legislators may enact laws and policies that build families rather than destroy them. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill our, our homes, homes with, with your, your love, love, O Lord. That families broken by divorce or separation may find support and understanding from people in their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill our, our homes with, with your love, love, O Lord. That those experiencing difficulties in their marriage may receive the grace to persevere in their commitments. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill our, our homes with, with your love, love O Lord. Lord that deceased relatives and friends may have the joy and peace in God's eternal home. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill our, our homes with, with your love, O Lord. Lord. God of love, you created us, male and female, to continue your work of creation. May our love for one another Reflect your indwelling presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your Church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.